All right, so this morning I woke up just before I was going on my ride, had my breakfast, scrolling the Instagram, the Peak Talk Instagram, and I was literally inundated with a message saying, can you do a video on the Matthew van der Poel handlebar failure? Can you let us know what happened? And I thought, well, actually I didn't watch the race yesterday and uh, having a few beers, didn't know what happened. Woke up this morning, I saw all these pictures of van der Poel crossing the line with a broken handlebar. The drops basically snaps off his handlebar. And obviously the internet trolls on Instagram, all the memes were going hard, trolling Canyon saying, what is this company doing? Why can't they make carbon that works? And I actually wrote to Raul Lucia's page on one of his posts saying, let's be fair, this problem is not exclusive to Canyon. It looks like an over tightening of the SCI lever clamp on the bar has damaged the bar or the bars had some delamination from being dropped, being bashed around in the team truck. Don't need to do a video on that. Um, it's just a, a carbon failure, kind of, it's not common, but it does happen. And then I looked a little bit more closely and there might be a slight nuance to this failure because of something that Canyon is using and that's a unique STI lever clamp that technically Shimano don't approve to my knowledge anyway. And we'll look at the nuance in the clamp design. Now you might think it's easy to just cr create a clamp for a carbon part. It's actually not trivial. When you do a basic FMEA, you realize how important these little parts are uh, it's safety critical, massively safety critical. If this part fails, your face is on the tarmac if you're not cyclocross world champion Van der Poel, right? I'm not saying Kane haven't done it properly, but we're gonna look at the nuances of the clamp design. And yeah, it's a risk. It is a risk clamping on carbon. And I, I, it goes the same with, with stems. It goes the same with steerer tubes. Clamping on carbon is inherently risky. Why they don't put chamfers at the corners of stems, at the corners of the, the clamp where it goes on the steerer tube, and even the Shimano uh, band clamps, the normal ones on the SCI levers, don't often have a nice chamfered or radius corner on that clamp. And don't forget, where you're clamping, the exit angle of the clamp is less than 90 degrees. So your clamp, that band, does dig in on the corners and you'll see it. Look at your own handlebars, you'll see witness marks from that clamp, top and bottom, where the edges of that band have been digging in. Now, what makes it worse is Van der Poel is probably the most aggressive front-loaded rider when it comes to riding hard right if someone's going to break a component it's going to be him he's not the smallest guy and if you look at his hand placement when he's riding on the hood he tries to get longer effective reach out of the bike by really putting his whole hand right as far along the hood as it can do to basically lengthen the cockpit um, so he's putting more of a torque on that on that clamp it's a pretty hard job for it to do uh, it's just one bolt at the end of the day but have canyon made the potential problem for these clamps worse by trying to redesign it we did a quick FMEA and we'll have a look. Um, and as a bulletin to Shimano, SRAM, Campy, or anyone who's going to engineer one of these clamps, please, please, please start putting radiuses top and bottom of the clamp where they hit the carbon bar. It's not so bad in, in metals, right? So if you've got an aluminium bar, it's a little bit less forgiving because it's a ductile material. With the carbon, it's easy to delaminate it. If you put a little nick in there, you start a little uh, stress concentration. I mean, you'll start a stress concentration with an aluminium bar but it's not gonna fail catastrophically like a carbon bar would. So we see on these band clamps, just because they're cheap, they're probably stamped. So they're stamped out of a strip of metal and then they're bent into shape and they probably cost pennies to make in thousands, right? So is it too hard to put a little radius or a chamfer on it? Probably not. You could probably make that into the part of the stamping tooling to literally swage over the edges. So you didn't have that edge contact because like I said, don't forget, you're not clamping on a straight tube, you're clamping on a curved part. So you're gonna get contact top and bottom where the edges of that clamp dig into the curved part because the exit angle of the clamp is less than 90 degrees. Anyway, uh, I'll have a look a little bit at the CAD design of that. And um, Canyon have made their own lever clamp, which you think would be a trivial part to make but when you actually think what it does and it's safety critical and you look at the FMEA, the failure mode and the severity of the failure mode is pretty serious. It's not something that should be done lightly and you need to get it right because not only because it could cause injury, but yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna fail the handlebars. It has a knock-on effect. It can damage other components if you get the clamp design wrong. Is the clamp biting in at the corners? Maybe. Is it not radius? I'm not sure it is. And it's not something I would pursue trying to change. Like Shimano have developed these clamps. We know they've worked year after year on, on SCI levers changing it may have been a bit risky. It must be said that I'm not saying that Canyon's proprietary clamp has caused this failure. It's a possibility, 
but like I said in the intro, it could have just happened from over tightening or user error. But anyway, if we start looking at the pictures, how do I know that Canon are using a different clamp design? Well, if you look at this picture of the bar here, this is I've taken from a, a Canyon video, you can see that the end of the drop is square shaped. So square peg, round hole, you won't be able to put a standard Shimano band clamp over that. So Canyon have developed their own kind of three piece clamp, which is pinned and hinged with a little gate to fit this type of bar. And here you can see that black part is the clamp. Now it has a couple of pins in there, a couple of hinges and a female thread to attach the lever body onto and clamp to the bar. That all looks fine so far. Here you can see it on the drop. The mechanics assembled it there. You can see the little pins, one's in, one's out. Here he's putting in the next pin and that forms basically the full band around the handlebar. And then similar to the Shimano type band clamp, you tighten it with your bolt, your M6 or M5, I think it's an M6. You tighten it, one side the lever body butts up against the bar and on the back side the band kind of clamps into the bar. Now this is what I was saying, you're clamping on a curved surface with a flat edge. It's gonna bite top and bottom, there's nothing you can do about that. That's not good in carbon, that never has been good in carbon. You need to limit that biting by adding a radius or a chamfer and I still don't know why Shimano don't do this more or any of them don't do it more because if you put a sharp corner on that band it's going to dig. That's kind of allowable in metal a little bit, it's more of a safety factor. If you start delaminating the carbon with that corner you're going to have problems, especially if you ride it as hard as Van, ride it as hard as Van der Poel. And this is what I'm saying here, so you can see where that hinged pin is on this custom clamp, the corner is very very close to the handlebar. Now, do that up nice and tight to stop it slipping with the animal of Van der Poel on top of it. Is that corner going to start digging into the bar? Obviously, it's going to, there's going to be some flex there as well. It's going to rotate a little bit. It's only one bolt at the end of the day. It's going to rotate a little bit and flex when he's you know, hanging his weight off the handlebars. And like I said, his torque off those hoods is going to be bigger than most because he really rides very forward on the hoods. And it's going to start digging in. It, it, it just is. Now, the position of that pin could be located to the side, perhaps if it didn't protrude too much for the bar tape or for the ergonomics. But the position of that pin being at the back, it looks like where the top of that pin is, there's a potential for that to start digging in uh, when that bolt is tightened and there's some kind of micro flexing happening. And any kind of digging in to those layers of carbon is going to start delamination. Another feature of the, the standard Shimano clamp, which makes it more kind of user friendly, is that there's no way you can puncture the handlebars with the bolt. Mm -hmm. In the Canyon one, if the bolt is too long, you could actually puncture through to the handlebars. Because if you look here, there's a through threaded hole in that clamp. And then they put the male bolt through the lever and it goes into that hole. If that bolt's too long or it flexes so much that the thread engagement is more than designed, and let's face it, it only looks like one diameter of thread engagement is allowed there. The end of the bolt then starts hitting the handlebar and if it's carbon, you're putting your full bolt load trying to crush carbon and you're gonna de delaminate the carbon. With the Shimano one, you can't do that because clever kind of barrel nut design and you're actually tightening the barrel nut and the male part of the thread is sticking out. And so no matter how much you tighten it, you're never pushing a thread into the carbon. With the Canyon one, that's a big, big potential risk site. And that's one of the things we'll discuss in the FMEA. I'm not sure that's happened on this, you know, on this occasion, but I'm looking for all, all eventualities. Now, again, what was I talking about? The chamfer. There doesn't appear to be any chamfer or soft radius on the clamps. Well, I modelled quickly the Shimano style clamp because it applies to this as well. Um, this is your Shimano style clamp. It's probably stamped and then bent into shape by a sort of bending machine. And this is the kind of radius feature that I'd want to see. You know, just a half or one mil radius on the corner to stop that sharp corner biting into carbon. Why don't they put that on there? You could easily form that as part of the stamping tool so it's swaged over the corner softly so you didn't damage the carbon. If Canyon haven't done that, they need to do it. Shimano start like need to start doing it, or all the companies need to start doing it because, because of the curvature of where the clamp clamps on the bars, 
you do get that biting top and bottom. So bulletin to all component manufacturers, please put soft chamfers or radiuses on anything that clamps on carbon, please. Finally, when you wanna redesign something that's tested and validated, you really need to do what's called an FMEA, which is failure modes and effects analysis. And this is a really quick and rubbish FMEA table. And it basically shows you all the different failure modes. You brainstorm and try and come up with different failure modes. You'll look at the severity of each failure, the probability, and that gives you a score. So I'm gonna score the Canyon clamp versus like your normal Shimano SRAM or Campy SDI clamp. So first failure mode is the clamp slips. Not very severe, probability quite high if the bolt isn't done up. Same score for Canyon, Shimano. The bolt shears, um, pretty severe. If the bolt shears, the bolt fails, the STI falls off, slips around, you're probably gonna crash. Probability quite low, there's quite a lot of safety factor in the bolt calc. Um, so the score for Canyon, Shimano, both the same, because it's both the same failure on both. Again, handlebar is damaged by clamp edges. Uh, pretty severe, because you can see in the carbon case, it can cause the carbon to fail. And the probability is quite high, because of not having that chamfer there and clamping on basically a curved profile. So again, Canyon and Shimano score equally there. Um, now, the Canyon design, this is where it starts to go wrong for the Canyon design, because it has a few extra failure modes that the Shimano one doesn't have. But I don't, I have to say, I don't think this is what has, what's happened in this failure, but it still shows you that the Canyon design is a riskier design than the Shimano one. So the Canyon one has these two, basically, pins, which pin the three parts of the clamp together. They have a failure mode in themselves, which they could shear. Um, pretty severe, I would say low probability, so another 40. And if you separate them, because they're not, it's not a redundant system, you have to take each one as, you know, a separate failure, you're both basically compounding the risks because you've got two pins in there. And then the third one, which is a really bad one, uh, that the Canyon one has that Shimano doesn't have, is that the bolt, like I mentioned, because uh, it's in that through threaded hole and there's no stop, if you over tighten the bolt or if the bolt's slightly too long or if there's a bit of flex in the bar and everything comes in a bit, then that end of the bolt, there's nothing really stopping it hitting the carbon and puncturing the carbon, which is catastrophic. It's a low probability because you hope the mechanic's gonna put the right length bolt in. But what I'm saying is when you're trying to design something in engineering, you try and make it foolproof, right? So it is completely human proof. So if the, if the mechanic picks up the wrong length M6 or M5 bolt, whatever it is, and threads it in, in the canyon, you're gonna puncture the bar and it's invisible. It's, it's literally an invisible failure and it's death waiting to happen. So it's not a foolproof design um, and that is inherently another risk, which is why you can see the total risk scores of the Canyon clamp is much higher than the Shimano clamp. But I will stress again, this I, you know, this is not what's happened, I don't think. Um, but yeah, just highlighting the, the risks there are in just designing something as trivial as a clamp. Um, well, it's not trivial, right? It needs to be, especially when it's safety critical, it needs to be taken with, with really, you know, a lot of due care and attention. Hope you enjoyed that. Stay tuned for the next one.